All right, let's move it on to the defense. And um, not a ton of personnel lost there. And uh, you mentioned the new scheme, new coaching staff across the board to a certain extent on both sides of the ball, but um, just and guys moving uh, into different roles on the coaching staff. Uh, your look at the defense. Yeah, so they're installing. And like I said, obviously, that's going to take some time. And I think you kind of need to, once you get everything in, you know, then you can kind of become what you're going to become. So I think that that's kind of, there's a lot of moving parts right now. Um, but, you know, from, you know, what these players have said, they like Mike McDonald as the defensive coordinator. They like that it's a quote unquote NFL system. And, you know, I will say this, like, and they're all talking about how good that is and they want to learn that before that they eventually go to the NFL and things like that. But, you know, in, they're saying it's an NFL system. Like it has to be adapted to college because there's a reason why, you know, you don't just run all NFL stuff in college. So, and I think that's happening as well. But, um, you know, with that being said, they say that Mike McDonald's bringing a ton of energy. Now, I don't know if you can bring much more energy than Don Brown did, even at like 60, whatever years old. Um, he's bringing the energy. Some of the younger coaches are as well. You see some clips from practice and they're doing a bunch of, you know, Oklahoma drills. Uh, and guys are jumping around, and it does seem to have a different type of feel to it based on what the guys are saying compared to last year. Um, basically, they want to build that identity of being a hard-hitting, fast defense. Uh, we've seen that under Don Brown, but I just think the system got figured out, um, and you know they're definitely going to play a lot more zone this year, protect those cornerbacks with uh, trying to manufacture some more pass rush, which you know that made it tough on the defense last year. I thought – you don't have any pass rush and you have corners that aren't good playing one-on-one -on -one in man-to-man -man coverage. I mean, that has disaster written all over it. And that's exactly what it was. I mean, it was a disaster by basically anybody's standards, especially at Michigan. So going into some of the personnel, um, huge to have Aiden Hutchinson as kind of the anchor of the defense up front at defensive end. He's still banged up from breaking his, breaking his leg last year. Uh, and is just kind of going through some, of the uh, the drills on the side and not, you know, more of the contact drills, but he's kind of easing himself into that when we got to talk to him a few weeks ago. Um, Dax Hill on the back end at safety, I think, is another uh, big, you know, guy to have because of just how much talent he has. And I think they're going to move him around a lot more, let him kind of take away the best receiver on the other team at times. They're not going to get burned and sit here and, you know, watch Ricky Green or Ricky White. I don't even remember his name from Michigan State. Uh, you know, a true freshman. His last name was White. I'm trying to come up with the first name. Ricky. Was, you know, it was Ricky. Ricky I just White. get it green and white mixed up because of their colors. But, okay, so Ricky White. Uh, I don't think they're just going to sit there and, and allow that to happen. You either, you know, zone up. And people say zone. It doesn't always work, you know. But um, you at least have to try different things, and you at least have to try to put your best player on a guy who's burning you all game long. So that's huge to have. And And you said it. I mean – this is a, a defense that didn't lose a ton. You lost Cam McGrone at the linebacker spot uh, who declared early for the NFL draft, but you have guys coming back. It's not always a good thing, um, you know, necessarily, because if you had a group that wasn't that good and they all come back, it's not a guarantee to just become, you know, that step better or whatever. But I think in this case, you do have um, some guys that got a little experience last year, again, a shortened season, and now can kind of, pick up where they left off in terms of their development. I frankly thought the corners were one year away coming into last year. And then Ambry Thomas opted out and it forced kind of Jamon Green and Vince Gray into the roles of being these number one corners that are, you know, have to guard the best guy on the other team. So uh, there's a lot to like about the fact that they are all coming back, um, but we're just going to have to see it play out because you need the talent as well. It's not just about experience. It's about having talent. Um, and I think that uh, there's a lot of talent in the freshman and sophomore classes, but can they emerge enough to get on the field? I had to look this up, Clayton, because otherwise it was going to drive me crazy because I remember scurrying around looking for Ricky White at the time that he was burning Michigan yep. play after play after play after play. I was thinking, uh, where'd this guy come from? I didn't know anything about him. I don't think many people knew much about him because he was like a low three star mm -hmm. and he wasn't highly recruited. Didn't catch a pass the week before against Rutgers. This was only his second game in college. I look him up here. I remember the numbers. Eight for 196 against Michigan. He only caught two passes the rest of the season. It's insane. It was kind of one of those 
performances that will live in Michigan State lore. Uh, it's like a rivalry game performance that will, you know, it'll go down as legendary no matter what the kid does. Um, you know, the kid who caught the or, or recovered the punt fumble and went in, I don't remember his name, but I guarantee you all the Michigan State fans out there do, and that's all that matters. He went off in that game, and Michigan had no answer. And credit Rocky Lombardi, too, for just chucking the ball down the field. And now Rocky Lombardi will be, what, the starter at Northern Illinois next year? But uh, he had one good game as well. And, uh, you know, the week before, what they turned it over seven times against Rutgers. I think looking back, it's like, man, what a spot to kind of overlook a team and, you know, underestimate what they could do. Uh, so it just worked out in their favor. And Ricky White will live in Michigan State lore forever. For the 10 or 15 times that I've seen the punt play from 2015 and the guy's names mentioned, I always think, OK, I'm going to remember his name this time. Because I because I don't remember his name either, and every time I see it and they mention his name, I think I'm going to remember his name. I don't remember his name. Yeah, he's he a defensive two, back that got his uh, broke his leg on the play. Yeah, he has two last names. I usually I think I do usually know his name. I just am blanking on it right now. Um, he I know he has a hyphenated last name. I'm pretty sure, and I could probably think of it at some point. But yeah, I don't think Michigan fans want to hear too much about this stuff. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought it up. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was painful, and that completely changed the Big Ten race uh, all around.